Hello and welcome to Building a Balanced Plate and Reading a Label. Because we run into problems when we start creating our plate with so-called healthy foods, but the plate sometimes is not going to give us the result we're looking for in the end. And there's a lot of misinformation about what is a protein source, what is a carb, what is a fat. So getting this information incorrect can be detrimental to your results. So that's why nutrition and understanding the foods we eat is the first thing we learn because when we learn this, we can then achieve our goal of long-term weight loss, long-term healthy lifestyle. We can lose weight, we can keep it off because we know how to read a nutrition label and we know what makes up the foods on our plate. And this is critical information for everyone, but we just don't learn this all the time in school. So now that you're learning about your macros and how to build your meal, I want to talk about how to read a food label to determine what is a protein, what is a carb, what is a fat, because there seems to be a lot of misinformation at times, especially with a lot of like trendy fad diets that is false information and then leaves a lot of people confused and overwhelmed. Um, on you know how to make a perfect plate and the biggest example that I use is peanut butter and beans because they typically get categorized as protein when in fact peanut butter is a fat source and beans are a carbohydrate so although peanut butter and beans do have some protein in them protein is not the key macronutrient and I can, I'm sure that you can imagine the problem that may arise if you were told to start eating more protein, but instead you started to incorporate more peanut butter and you started to incorporate more beans to your diet. So instead of you adding more protein to your diet, you would actually be adding more carbs, which would be from the beans, and you'd be adding more fats from the peanut butter. And your diet would actually now cause you to just start gaining more weight, not losing weight. So I do have some good news. Um, it is actually very easy to distinguish which food items belong to what macronutrient since this stuff never changes. And especially if you learn how to study the meal plan table, once you study that table, you're set for life. But there's also another way. So every food item has a nutrition label, even produce that doesn't typically have nutrition facts on them. You can easily look them up and see the nutrition facts online. Um, this goes for everything that you eat, fruits, vegetables, potatoes, um, and then obviously anything that has a nutrition label on it. So when you look at any label, you always want to look at the three macronutrient categories, total fat, total carbohydrate, and total protein. So when looking at all three of these macronutrients, um, whenever on the label, whichever item has the highest amount, that food item is that macronutrient's main source. So I do want to show you a few different examples. So the first example I want to show you is blueberries. So you see that 112 grams of blueberries have zero grams of fat, 16 grams of carbs and 0.8 grams of protein because the highest macronutrient belongs to 16 grams of carbs blueberries are a carb and side note all fruit is a carb so let's look at beans for example one can of black beans has 1.2 grams of fat 70 grams of carbs and 26 grams of protein so you can see by reading this labels Beans have both protein and carbs, but 70 grams of carbs versus 26 grams of protein. So beans are not a protein source first, they're a carb source. And when eating a meal, if you only have veggies and beans on your plate, you're missing out on protein big time. So you need to still add protein to that meal. So learning what sources are true or learning what foods are true protein sources or true fat sources can change the game when it comes to making meals that will result in long-term success for weight loss. You can eat healthy food, but just eating healthy food doesn't automatically make you lose weight. You need the right balance of macronutrients to really give you that sustainability, which we've learned in uh, you know the past so far. So knowing how to read a label does come in handy and knowing all the foods in the meal plan table can change your life and will change your life. So before I go, here are some frequently asked questions I want to clarify. Is peanut butter a protein? No, 
It's a fat source. Are beans a protein? No, it's a carbohydrate. Is quinoa a protein? No, it has some protein, but it's a carb first. And where does fruit fall? Fruit is actually a carbohydrate. All fruits are carbs. And is cheese, cheese a protein source? No, cheese is a fat source. Is sausage a protein? No, most of them are higher in fat than protein. Same goes for bacon. Bacon has a higher percentage of fat than protein. And lentils, are they a protein? Lentils are a carbohydrate. And lastly, my most important topic, um, I wanna touch on protein bars. This is huge, one, because there's hundreds of brands out there calling protein bars protein bars, when in fact, when you read the label, it is the furthest thing from a protein bar. And your mind's gonna explode when you learn some of this information. So here's how to determine whether or not your protein bar is a true protein bar. So let's take a look at the Kellogg protein bar, for example. The label says it has five grams of fat, 22 grams of carbs, and 12 grams of protein. So from everything we learned so far, looking at this bar, this is clearly a carb bar. <laughs> I laugh because that's what I call it. Because 12 grams of protein is not enough for your protein serving. Um, even if that was a regular meal, that's not enough protein serving to begin with. And secondly, it has more carbs than it does protein. So if someone is eating this bar thinking, wow, I'm getting in my protein for this meal. I'm getting in enough protein. In fact, you aren't because it's a very insignificant amount. So I do want to show you what a real protein bar is. I'm also going to show you my favorite protein bar. These protein bars are level one bars. And not only are these level one bars true protein bars, but they're delicious and they taste like candy. Um, so if you read this label, uh, it's 13 grams of fat, 20 grams of protein, which is a good amount that you want in a bar and you have 19 grams of carbs. So this bar is in fact a protein bar. It has more protein than any other macronutrient, plus it has a sufficient amount of protein. So when you are choosing a protein bar, you want to have 20 grams of protein or more in the bar. So this is critical to know next time you are looking for protein bars, look for 20 grams or more. So there you have it. Uh, when figuring out what your foods are, study the meal plan table. As I have all the whole foods on that list already categorized out for you, all you have to do is really study it. And whenever you're in stores or you're looking at a label, now you know what to look for. You're not gonna just look at the calories, you're gonna look at the macronutrients on the label. This will give you so much more knowledge on understanding what your foods are made up of. You'll be actually enlightened by some of the things that you're reading like, wow, I didn't realize this had so much fat, so this had so much protein. And one is not better or worse, but it's important to know what the majority of your diet is so you're not overeating certain macronutrients and that you're not under eating certain macronutrients. So I hope you found this valuable. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always ask below. Um, but Again, you know how to now read a food label and also be, keep your eye out on protein bars. So I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I'll see you next video.